the early Triassic, 248 million years ago, a time when the world is in a state of healing, as it has just gone through the worst mass extinction event in the planet's history, with up to 70% of terrestrial life and 95% of marine life going extinct. Even a few million years after the catastrophic events have ended, much of Earth remains barren and almost devoid of life. But some areas have recovered better than others. Even in the oceans, they were almost completely devastated. Where China is today are vast shallow seas dominated by protected lagoons that are an ideal habitat for a recovering ecosystem. While fish and marine invertebrates were hit hard, they are gradually recovering, but it is reptiles that are taking advantage of this new world that now lacks much competition. Leading this charge are the Hoopasuchians, small, eel-like reptiles that have already become fully aquatic. They have a range of diets from swift fish eaters to slow bottom feeders. This family has in a few million years diversified, as they have few other marine reptiles competing with them other than each other. One of the strangest of this group is the family's namesake, Hoopasuchus itself. With a long snout, thin tail, four paddle-like limbs, and a tall round body, Hoopasuchus can often be seen peeking their heads above the waves to take a quick breath of air, before diving below to explore their shallow yet rich home. Hoopasuchus aren't particularly fast swimmers, and their armoured backs make them far less manoeuvrable than many other later marine reptiles. But they are still active hunters, and one male is on the lookout for his next meal. Since the mass extinction, some of the few life forms to bounce back is plankton, which has paved the way for the species that feed on them, such as zooplankton, to recover as well. This goes up the food web until getting to Hoopasuchus. But how do they gather such tiny prey? While swimming along, he eventually spies a cluster of the small animals and moves towards them. As he approaches, he opens his long jaws, but they don't just widen vertically, but horizontally. As Hoopasuchus have evolved an expandable gola pouch in their lower jaw, much like a pelican, he moves forward and scoops up the mass of zooplankton, securing it in his pouch before slowing down. Most of his prey escape, but he has caught a sizable amount, so now he has to get rid of the extra water in his mouth. That's where his second adaptation comes in. At the top of his jaws, he has fine brush-like filaments, very similar to modern baleen whales. He pushes the water out through these specialized teeth, leaving the prey trapped in his jaws to be swallowed. Hoopasuchus are the earliest known reptilian filter feeders, living on a food source few animals their size are able to catch. The odd thing is that they are only a meter long, a far cry from the often massive filter-feeding whales of the far future. This also means that they are far from the largest hunters in the ocean, and the male Hoopasuchus has wandered too close to open water, drawing the attention of an ancient species of shark. These streamlined predators were here long before the world was devastated by the last mass extinction, and will survive many more. The shark is only slightly larger than the Hoopasuchus, but it is enough to make the reptile turn around as fast as he can and dive to find cover. Sensing an opportunity, the shark gives chase, its graceful movements clearly far easier and swifter than the hastened and rigid movements of the Hoopasugus. He is moving to a cluster of coral where he can hide from the carnivorous fish, but as he dives, it's not fast enough. The shark attacks from above, biting down on the top of his back, causing him to thrash and throw his head back trying to bite the shark in retaliation, but his stiff body won't allow him. Despite this, it is also his salvation. The sturdy scales and osteoderms are too tough for the shark to cut through, despite his multiple attempts. Bleeding slightly, the Hoopasuchus breaks free and continues his descent with the shark now nipping at his tail. The marine reptile squeezes through a gap in the coral. The shark watches him disappear circles the area for about a minute, and then moves on looking for squishier targets. After checking the coast is clear, the male Hoopasuchus steadily rises to the surface again and takes a deep breath. He still has a lot of prey to catch before he is done today, 
after which he will find himself a gap in the coral that will hold him steady against the ocean current and sleep through the night. Despite the devastated world around them, this small patch of wilderness is one of the few Edens of the early Triassic. Hello fellow travellers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a filter-feeding marine reptile. Yes, you heard that right. It's Hoopasuchus. The first remains of Hoopasuchus were discovered in 1972 in the Hubei region of China. It lived during the Olenkayan stage of the early Triassic, between 248 and 247 million years ago. It belonged to the order Hoopasuchia, a strange group of reptiles that are closely related to ichthyosaurs, that have only been found in China and only lived for a very short time span, that being the early Triassic. Multiple almost complete skeletons have been found, giving scientists a great look at its skeletal anatomy. As we can see, it had a long thin snout that was first thought to be toothless, along with small eyes. The neck is short, but has many vertebra. The rest of the body continues this, having many densely packed vertebra that would have made the animal's body quite stiff and inflexible. Above these, we can see the back was covered in thick armor that ran along the back, giving it protection from predators. The whole body is quite tall, especially compared to its head, as it not only had many dense ribs, but belly ribs, also known as gastralia, which better protected the underbelly at the cost of restricted movement. The tail was long and eel-like, being the main method of propulsion. Looking at the limbs, we can see they have widened to be more flipper-like. What's interesting is that some specimens have been found with extra digits. Having more than five digits is termed as polydactyli, with the specimen SSTM5025 having seven digits in the forelimbs and six digits in the hindlimbs. Most tetrapods had gone down to five or less digits by the Triassic, so this is likely a holdover from an ancient ancestor, and may have been useful for creating wider flippers. So at a glance, Hoopasuchus doesn't appear to be the best suited at swimming, but it didn't really have a lot of competition, as it lived right after the Great Dying, the world's worst mass extinction, wiping out up to 95% of life in the oceans. At this time, China was dominated by mostly shallow lagoons, and this is where Hoopasuchus and its relatives took to the water, and with barely anything to threaten or compete with, they didn't need to be highly specialized in order to feed and survive. So what was it eating? Originally, it was thought Hoopasuchus would catch small prey-like fish with its long toothless snout, or that it probed the sea floor looking for food. But then, a new discovery shed light on its behavior, and it all came down to what angle the animal died in. Like many fossils, the previous Hoopasuchus were fossilized on their side, but a later one was found with its head down, and this showed as yet unseen anatomy of its skull. As we can see, the skull had a fork-like gap that went down the length of the snout, and after comparing it to many modern animals' skulls for reference, it was found it most resembled those of baleen whales. This diagram shows the Hoopasuchus skull compared to a minke whale, and well, it speaks for itself. Whales have these so that when they open their mouths, they can expand it in all directions, so they can take in as much water along with plankton, krill, or fish in one go. So Hoopasuchus must have been doing something similar in order to hunt similar prey. This leads to additional ideas about how the animal may have looked or acted in life. In order to secure its food, it's fair to say that it must have had some sort of expanded gola pouch seen in multiple animals today like cetaceans and others like pelicans and frigate birds. Taking a closer look at the jaws, it was noted that Hoopasuchus had notches and grooves which are theorized to have had soft tissue structures that acted like baleen. It was likely very different in both physical structure and appearance, but served the same purpose, and strengthens the hypothesis of Hoopasuchus being a filter feeder. This would make it the oldest known filter feeding tetrapod, 
But what racks many people's brains is that it's a filter feeder despite being so small. But this is more due to us being used to the term filter feeder being commonly applied to massive animals like baleen whales and whale sharks. When in fact many animals feed on plankton and other very small prey, it's just usually not their only food source. This may have been the case for Hoopasuchus itself, but it seems that either the competition from other species or a relative lack of other prey led it down the evolutionary path of filter feeding. What's so incredible is that it did this less than 5 million years after the world's worst mass extinction. A very quick adaptation that shows the speed of which evolution can affect a species, and indeed an entire family. I could go into greater detail on the Hoopasuchians as a whole, but I think they deserve their own video. So, if you want to see an even more crazy member of this family, please watch my Eridmore Hippas video. Link in the description. But what do you think of Hoopasuchus? And for my question of the week, the Hoopasuchians seem to be either fishing, filter feeding, or bottom feeding. Which of these three options do you think is best for a new family of small aquatic animals to specialize in? What lesser known extinct creature would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.